No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today, we've got a man who carries a lot of uh, presence with him into a room. Yes, sir. Are we saying Big X the plug, or is that just how it's stylized in the YouTube title? It's Big the plug? No, nah, it's, it's Big X the plug. Oh, okay. Big, Big X, X the plug. Yeah, all right, because yeah. you, you jam it all together with no spaces. I'm not sure yeah, where to go with it. All Big right. X the plug. Fine. But it's going to be just Big X, though. We're going to get it. I'm gonna get it broke down. Why well, you not the plug anymore? I mean, who's the plug now? I mean, I don't know. It's not for me to know. I'm a big extra rapper. Oh, I make music. I'm already. You switch it up. Yeah. Damn. Damn. Already graduated <laughs> from plug status. Hey man, I found another found another rap. Right. I gotta take it. Well, my girl's Lena the plug. Okay. So I, I didn't even think about it until right now that y'all might be related, but <laughs> I don't think she ever been to Texas. Hey. Go down in Texas. <laughs> it does go down in Texas. So uh, tell me about Dallas and uh, what it was like coming up out there. Uh, man, Dallas, I mean, it's it's just a city, man. I ain't really, I was at that time, I was like, like nine. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I was in the Grove with my mom until like nine. I seen, that's where I seen the worst part set, you know what I'm saying? Really? That was the grimiest part of your upbringing? Yeah, no, nah, for sure, for sure. And then uh, I was just too bad. Like, by the time I got to nine, I was... I wouldn't even be here right now. If what, I would have stayed out there, I wouldn't be here right now. What were you doing at that time? It's kind of hard to get in that much trouble Man, before you're nine, right? Exactly. So, like, I'm I'm like seven, eight, slapping my teachers at school. Like, wow. Yeah, I'm stealing from stores, getting caught by the little CIs and shit inside and shit. Like, I was just, I don't know. I, my mama was doing what she was doing, so she wasn't really worried about me as long as I was in the house. What was she I doing? Needed to, hey, she was, she was providing. Okay. You know what I'm saying? She was just making sure that me and my sisters were straight. Right. So while she was doing what she was doing, I was out. I mean, I had my auntie watching me, but my auntie was going through it. So Where was your pops at? My pops was in and out of jail doing what he was doing as well, though. Okay. But he still always made sure I was straight. And then, like, the whole time throughout that, that you know, that nine-year range, like I said, I would be so bad, it would be like a summer. She would just send me off, and then the school year start, and then he'd send me back. Right. So, it, you know, I've not always been back and forth. I had both my parents in my life. But she was a little bit more sympathetic and he was a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He, was, he, was, he was strict. So, like, from, from 10 all the way to I was 16, oh, it was nothing. I was a football player. Okay. Football player. Big X the football player. That so you weren't like, obsessed with this rap shit? You were thinking about sports? No, nah, yeah, I was a football player. I didn't I ain't start thinking about rap till two years ago. Right. Because a lot of times, sometimes I'll have a security guard and I'll try to talk to him about <coughs> rap and I'll realize this motherfucker only been paying attention to sports his whole life. He don't yeah. know anything about rap. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, it's, it's two very different personality types. Some people nah, do both, sure. but for a lot of people, it's, it's too much information. No, nah, I was I was, I was, was an athlete, man. I mean, I'm still an athlete. I can still, you know what I'm saying? It might not look like it. Right, but <laughs> I still can get down. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna let you just get away with that one. What, what kind? <laughs> what, what, how much you benching right now? I don't know, man. I ain't just maxed out in a minute. Oh, okay. but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't lift it. Some people, you know what I'm saying? So right, I know I can still lift what needs to be lifted. That's good to know. Very yeah. good to know. In case I need to be like pulled from under a car or some you. shit, you could lift you. the car. Somebody else got to pull me. I might throw my back out, but mm. I got you. Well, I appreciate that. I'm, I'm at least try. I'm gonna cover your chiropractor bill. And we good. <laughs> we should be good, dude. Um, okay, so that's that's up until like ten, and then where do you move? So boom, my pops, he had just got out of uh, out of prison. He stayed in Commerce, Texas. He's from Greenville, Texas. Okay, so that's like that's East Texas, nine hundred three area. So um, I move out. Well, actually, my mom tell me pack up all my stuff. She drive me all the way to Commerce, point out a door, say, "Hey, go knock on that door." I knock on the door. I turn around. She pulling off. Right. Boom, the door open, it's my pops. He and he just break down crying. This big six eight. You know what I'm saying? He that was the first time I ever seen him like that. But he tears broke of down. happiness? Nah, tears of like, what am I gonna do? He literally had just got out the pen. But but she was so upset with your behavior that she was just like fucking him and just dump him I off. Ain't on his lie, dad? I think I think the that last straw was I had uh I think she was asleep or something, and I had to go to the store. And she ain't, she ain't hear me or something, so I just took the money myself. Uh-huh. And at the time, I ain't really, like, I knew, you know what I'm saying? Of course, I know what money is. I knew how to count it, but I just grabbed some bread, you know what I'm saying? Knew I was going to need something at the store. Right. Not knowing, I done grabbed all the rent. You uh-huh. know what I'm saying? Yeah, I done gave people money. I done, just, I'm outside being, a, you know what I'm saying, a kid. I done bought a couple of BB guns, you know what I'm saying? We outside <laughs> living. But we get, that was the first time my mama ever just whooped me. Like, my mama whooped me. 
Man, imagine being a fucking parent. You work your whole week, you feel and me? then your kid takes the money and, and buys some BB she, guns. And that was that was after she just went in the streets like that. So she was trying to get right. So mm. she was working at Waffle House. Oh man, yeah. So I done took out her little tip money and went in and splurged it. So that was the first time she with me. And after that, she dropped me off. Let me tell you something. Everybody who works at Waffle House is earning their motherfucking check. No cap. That's not an easy job. I'm already knowing, especially during the weekends. Especially at night. No cap. <laughs> D- different no areas, cap. got different crowds. And that's when she worked too at night. She worked overnight. So I know, mm. yeah, I really, I, I mean, now that I'm older, you know what I'm saying? I'm sorry, mama. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm glad I had a bunch of shitty normal jobs during my life so yeah. that I can never, I can never look at a Waffle House employee and just like look down on them or no, like sure. take it for granted what they're going through. Cause I know that probably this shift is a lot harder than whatever the fuck I had to do. Today. No, for no. sure. For sure. I'm, so my first job was at Taco Cabana. Oh yeah. So yeah. So I, <laughs> you think that like a, a Mexican fast food chain, like did, was there any Mexican people working there? Did that it was all Mexican people. I was, okay. You, so and moved, you. I had just moved to North Dallas. So I stayed on, it's, it's like, they call it like, it, they call it the lane, but it was on Webb's chapel. And it's like, it's 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 like it's it's little Mexico. Mm. You know what I'm saying? All around there is it's Mexico. Mm. And so that's what it was when I worked at Taco Gumena. He was I was like, all right, boom, it's my first job. I think the pay was like seven twenty five. Right. He said, For you, my friend, seven seventy five. <laughs> I said Ballin'. I said, Yeah, I, I'm I'm loving it. But then I got to working overnight. I'm falling asleep on the ships and whatnot. Right. I knew that wasn't for me. They weren't feeling it. Uh, they, they was they was loving it. They just they just needed somebody that was there. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I wasn't feeling it. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't like I don't, I don't know. I always knew that I wasn't gonna be able to work for nobody. Like right. Even with football, I think that's why football didn't work out for me. Cause it got to a point where that so like boom, I said I stayed with my pops from nine to sixteen. He kicked me out at sixteen. Right. Because at sixteen I was smelling myself. I felt like mm-hmm. I had offers coming in and I was. T- varsity, you know what I'm saying? Couldn't nobody tell me nothing. And so that's where I, I had to hit my head, you know what I'm saying? Pops kicked me out. Then boom, I was struggling to get to school because now I'm staying back in the Grove. So boom, now I'm coming. It was, it was just a lot. So I ended up getting kicked off the team. I was went listening to the coaches and whatnot. I was just smelling myself, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it got to a point where it, I know it had to happen, you know what I'm saying? But I, I, I knew that I couldn't. I just, I don't like taking a Authority, I guess you know what I'm saying. Right. Just like, I mean, a lot of rappers, I think, fall into that category yeah. of basically like they're just not gonna have a fucking job, and that's right. why a lot of them, if they weren't rapping, they would probably be locked up, is because it's, it's kind of at a certain point, if you're not gonna be like an entrepreneur, or figure out a legal <laughs> yeah. way to make it, yeah. or figure something out on the streets, or maybe a rapper. I mean, it's not understood. It's usually how that story ends. But uh, okay, so damn, that must have crushed you though. Like you, you spent all your life just thinking about football and then all of a sudden you're just off the team? Was there any thought of like I could get back on it? I got kicked off the team and then I tried to go to a bunch of other schools and they wouldn't sign off on it. Right. Because it's like they knew. They knew what I, you know, my like my worth. You know what I'm saying? And so they wouldn't sign off for me to go play on no other team and then I ended up moving with my mom in Ferris, Texas. Uh A little country town and they signed off on it. Right. <laughs> they, it was a team that had lost every game. They just needed somebody. Hadn't been to the mm-hmm. playoffs and I don't know how long. So they just signed off on me. They let me play. Right. And so I played there. Then I got kicked out of there. For what? I, they, they suspended me for my for my safety. And then when I tried to come back after Christmas break, they suspended me indefinitely. What, but based okay, on so what? Okay, so boom. What happened was, like I said, this little country, little country town. So when I get there, I'm coming from the city. So... People driving around with trucks with Confederate flags mm-hmm. hanging off of them. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's way more like that than yeah, where you were before. Yeah, but they mm-hmm. loved me during the season, though. Like, during mm-hmm. the season, when I helped them get to the playoffs and whatnot, they loved me. But as soon as the season was over, and I, I just started noticing everything, you know what I'm saying? Because everybody was just so much in my face. Once the season was over, everybody was out of my face, and I got to really see. Mm-hmm. And I was like, whoa. Damn. Because we always wonder that. In California, yeah. it's like – there's not a lot of visible racism. Like I just yeah. feel like I'm almost never gonna see like a racist bumper sticker or no, a Confederate sure. flag. Maybe if you go up far north, you start to get to areas where you might see some of that. But yeah, so like in Texas in general, like would you say there's still a lot of racism or is I'm it I'm not gonna say a lot, but it's definitely still out there for sure. Right. It's definitely still out there. I feel like it's a lot of polite racism, but the kind you're talking about of like having a fucking Confederate flag in the back yeah, of your but car, that, but it, that's a them, different level, right? But to them that was polite. 
Right. Because, okay, do you buy the idea that that's just them being proud of their heritage or do you see it as explicitly racist? I mean, I, you can't say. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? But it's just like, I feel like if you respect me enough and I'm coming at you this way, hey, can you not have that up? Right. If we respect each other enough, you should be like, all right, cool. Mm-hmm. Even though I I believe in what I believe in, I, I can have it all around my house, wherever, whatever. But I understand that this man don't, you know, respect it. You feel like Texas in general is a culture of people just kind of sticking to their own kind? Like, were you around many white people growing up? Like, when you were yeah. talking about working at the Mexican restaurant with all Mexican people, I was kind of wondering. I'm like, what's the vibe like between blacks okay, and Mexicans? So boom, I went, out of the three high schools I went to, I went to a high school in Mesquite. That was, it was a mixture of white people, uh, Hispanics, uh, a little money having African Americans. You know what I'm saying? It was it's a mix of everything. Then you go to Ferris, where it's predominantly white people, and it's a little sprinkle of black people. Then you go to WT White, where it's majority Mexicans, a sprinkle of white people, and a sprinkle of black people. Mm. So it it was never was a problem. You know, I, I don't think it's a problem. It's not that much of a problem. It's just, like I said, it's just you got a couple people. Interesting, because like, all right, I've lived in New York and California for most of my life, and whenever I go down south especially Texas, I'm always just like, God damn, everybody's friendly as fuck. People just have a very, very nice demeanor about themselves in terms of how they, you know, exchange pleasantries and stuff like that. And then that is kind of crazy when you think about how many people basically get shot and killed for, like, stepping on somebody's fucking lawn because the the laws in Texas, like, basically permit you to fucking cap somebody if they do anything to you. But see, it's like, that's why whenever... Things like that happen, it's always a big thing because it's like mm. we know in Texas, okay, we know not to go step on that line. Mm. But you're going to have every now and then there's going to be one person that step on that line and yeah. then it's going to be it's, it's loud in Texas so everybody going to know. I was and just yeah. watching this video that went viral of a dude in New York, I think, and he, he like basically some dudes are trying to beat him up. He goes in his backpack, he pulls out a hatchet, and he starts and chopping up chopping the whole the fucking yeah, restaurant. Too, and everybody got scared. Yeah, yeah and everybody, like you see a lot of people commenting like, if that shit went down in my state, he'd be dead. Like yeah. I would have fucking pulled out and shot him yeah, right there. Yeah, Texas, yeah, he'd have been over with. Right? Like, he'd I mean, we kind of assume. If there's 20 people in there, probably one of them got I ain't going to lie. In Texas, whenever they was punching on him, he would have went to sleep. Mm. He wouldn't be. He wouldn't have been up. He wouldn't have been up. Yeah, man. Those are some weak ass New York yeah, punches. Yeah, yeah, nah. If me and my partners, he would have been up. We would have been stumping on. Them. Oh, you and your partners, I'm sure, would have handled yeah, them. Yeah, it's a different ball game. Okay, so you, you get kicked out of all these fucking schools and everything. Then what happens? Uh, surprisingly, man, I'm, I I made it to college. Okay, made it to college. I went for a semester. I went and played in Minnesota. Nice, far from Texas. Culture man, shock. Just, you said what? Culture shock? Like, what, how'd you fit in over there? I mean, it was it was a mixture. It was a mi- it, I mean, it was like like I said, I had just been to all these schools where it was a mixture, so it really didn't bother me. Mm. And then either way it go, I'm, I've always been the person to stick out, so I stuck out regardless. You right. know what I'm saying? But I got there, and I was just, I don't know, I, I thought to move out there because I was just tired of Texas. Mm. I feel like everything was going wrong in Texas, so let me get out of Texas. Right. Went to Minnesota. And then I was homesick. Mm. I wanted to go back home. And so the only thing that, the last thing that I that I was coping with in Texas was weed. You know what I'm saying? Like that was what was keeping me sane in Texas. Right. That's a friend I've always had with me. No matter no where cap. I go in the world besides like China and Russia. <clears throat> and see, like I said, I had played football all my life. So I didn't really get introduced to weed till I was 16. Mm-hmm. So boom, once I left Pops Crib, I'm hanging around and doing what I'm doing. Then boom, I get smoking weed. Yeah, it was just, it's been my friend since then. So, boom, I had stopped, went to school, was in college for a little bit, no smoking, and then I don't know, man. I just got, I guess, sad, depressed, and I smelt, I smelt it one day. Mm-hmm. I just smelt somebody walk past and smelt like the best gas in the world, and I stopped him and tapped in with him, and I ended up being that's where the plug, big X the plug came in at. Ah, yeah. Okay. And so, yeah, I had it going at school, man. Everybody knew to come get the gas from me. So you had some street smarts. All of a sudden, you're surrounded by people that need product and probably aren't willing to put in the and work can, to get and it. I can get them however mm. much for whatever because it, mm. it was a Christian school. Oh, wow. So, that they, you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. And then it was only a sprinkle of, of color folks there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's the person who I got it from was a color folk. So it just happened. So I, me being cool with everybody, me being on a football team, now I done sprinkled into now these I got these white folks, I got essays on the team. Mm. So I was running the school. After a while, 
people started getting jammed up, smoking and whatnot, and they got to telling them. Right. Yeah. How many months did you get yeah, under I ain't your belt? Even, I ain't even get to the Thanksgiving break. <laughs> <laughs> they tried to kick me out before the Thanksgiving break. Fuck. Yeah. And then, uh, so they they did kick you out. Yeah, or? I got kicked out. They tried to. They was gonna give me till Thanksgiving break, but I was so pissed off that they were suspending me that I like tore up my whole hall. Okay. And so they was like, "Nah, you gotta go ASAP." Wow. And so I went back to Texas. Right. Got back to Texas. Everybody was just upset. Like, oh, you was the one. You was supposed to make it. Mm. Whatever, whatever. So I was just like, "Well, can I come back or no?" Wasn't nobody really trying to help. I slept on my granny couch for a little bit. Then should I move? I ended up getting a, a old lady. I got a girlfriend, mm-hmm. and so shit, we moved to Austin. We just, shit, it's been going on from there. You moved to Austin. Yeah. And did you have rap dreams at that time? Austin's nope. a very musical city. Austin, I moved to Austin, and I don't know, I moved to Austin with no plan. I ain't going to lie. She had a plan. She was supposed to be going to school, doing some other shit. But when I got there, I just was there. And so, like, her mama and my mama, like, they all grew up, like, they best friends. So once they once they knew that I was there, they was like, oh, well, you got to. You got a nigga. He need to help you with the bills. We not helping you with nothing. Uh-huh. So they kind of stopped helping her. And so boom, they, they, they went to school because now she got to work. And then I wasn't working at first. I was. I actually had, I ain't going to lie, I, I went on the run and didn't even know I had went on the run. So like right before I moved to Austin, somebody had owed me some bread. Some Something had went down. I ended up getting my bread though. You bust his head? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I ended up getting my bread. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so when I went to Austin, I didn't think nothing of it. Then boom, next thing I know, I'm getting calls from people in Ferris saying that the, the cops uh, were looking for you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I even talked to them. They was like, well, because they had a bunch of my stuff. Because when I when I left to go to Austin, I left like a bag or two in my partner truck. And so I guess they had pulled him over looking for me. And they was like, well, we got all your stuff. Uh, if you want it, you know, you got to just come talk to us. I was like, shit, fuck Fuck them shoes. Right. I don't need them shoes. Fuck them shoes. <laughs> but so in Austin, are you still worried about getting caught up? Nah, because they never told me like, oh, you had a warrant or okay. they were just saying, oh, we need to talk to you about what happened. Right. But like I'm already local knowing, cop shit. They're, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, but I'm already knowing what happened. Like, you know what I'm saying? This happened. This happened. That, that's, that's what happened. So, and I'm telling them that, that's, that's what happened. Right. You know what I'm saying? That was my money. Either way, it goes, that's my money. So. You told the cops what? Like, this guy ran off on the plug. I nah, had to, nah, I had to whoop him shit. in the parking nah, lot. No, 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 shit. I gave him money. He was bringing me my money. The people who house I was at said he didn't want him there. I said, all right, boom, I need my money. He handed me my money. When he handed me my money, I just told him some stuff went down, and I ended up having my money in my hand. Right. And I left. I don't know. what They said, oh, he uh, was... Well, how did his lip get but I don't, I don't know. I can see why the cops wouldn't be happy with that explanation. I, man, look, man, the cow, the Cowboys was playing fool. We went in that the Cowboys was playing. That's all I remember. The Cowboys was playing. I just remember he owed me some money. He brought me the money, and that was that. Well, how did this, I don't know what happened between that. I, I was watching the Cowboys. Like how are they ever going to prove that you assaulted somebody unless there's video evidence? That's what I'm saying. Some kind of physical evidence. I, I mean, don't know nothing about nothing. Like if I'm, you shoot somebody, there's a gun, there's a bullet, there's there's a real way they can make that case. But in terms of a punch, it's like, yeah, you got a fucking scratch on your cheek. Like, but see, if prove I, was I did there, it. If I was there, though, in fears, they probably still would have took me to jail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But due to the fact that I had, I was already gone, they was just, they weren't really tripping off of it, but they knew I had to come get my shit. So you just stayed in Austin? Okay. I just stayed in Austin, and then I ended up. But boom, where I fucked up at was, okay, so my 18th birthday. So this is all before 18. Wow, so this isn't even you thinking about music. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm nowhere near music. So boom, this is, I'm in Austin. My my, my girlfriend at the time, she's like, oh, you finna, you know, you finna be 18. Let's go get your license. Let's go to San Antonio and get your license. I go, boom, to get my license, and the constable come out the back room and tell me I got a warrant for uh, aggravated robbery. Hmm. <laughs> and so the cops like show up outside, or she just fills you in and tells you. Nah, like I, as soon as I I do this little thumbprint shit at the at the the uh, what is it the DPS? Sure. Yeah. And boom, I do it. And as soon as I do it, I see out my peripheral, I see a constable come out of the back room, and he just walked up on me and just kind of leaned on the counter right next to me. And so I'm just acting like I don't even see him. He like, are you such and such such and such? I'm like, uh, yeah. He's like, I need you to come back here for me. I need you to talk to me. 
And we get back there, he like, yeah, man, you got a warrant for uh, aggravated robbery. But I don't know yet. I'm waiting on uh, Ferris to give me the confirmation. So I'm already knowing what it's for as soon as he say Ferris. So I'm giving my girl my keys, all this shit, like, you know what I'm saying? Because I already knew. How the time he telling me he waiting for confirmation, this nigga waiting on another constable, a bigger constable. Uh-huh. The constable get there, he tell me, I ain't going to lie, fella. You're, you're a big fella. I ain't know if I'll be able to take you on my own. So. <laughs> and so a constable can arrest you? Yeah. I don't yeah. even know what it is. A constable right. is, is, I damn near think it's like a sheriff. Like okay. they, The constables is who come pick you up for warrants. Right, all right. Like if you got a warrant, they're going to come, they come and knock on your door. Uh huh. And you know so he called for a larger man because he wasn't sure if he could it take you. A, so he's assuming that you're going to resist arrest. Type shit. Because the whole time yeah. I'm like, nah, I ain't nah, nah. Right. Nah. So yeah, that was the first time I went to jail in San Antonio. Right. Bear County. Damn. So how long were you in that there? I was in there less than 48 hours. Oh, okay. Yeah, I went in there too long. And what happened to that case? Believe it or not, it's, I guess it's still an open case. So they just dropped it because it's been years. Right. Nothing. I bonded out. I ain't heard nothing. And you just, don't, you just haven't heard about it? They ain't caught me from no court date, no nothing. Oh, that's good. Might as well have a 10 dude. And, but he, I don't know. Ain't no telling how he told the story, but he was a he was a delinquent. You know what I'm saying? So right. Might as well have a 10. Ain't nobody believe the story, no way. I mean, considering how many people, like, do robberies or, or shoot people and then get out of jail the next day, the idea of me getting in serious trouble for punching somebody just sounds kind of ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> right? You know, I like, mean, I ain't even got no evidence. Ain't no, uh, yeah, it's he say, she say. Right. That's what I'm saying. Um, all right. So you're in Austin. Uh, mm-hmm. What's what's life like out there? Do you become the plug again? or nah, I'm broke. Okay. I ain't gonna lie, I'm broke. As, as, I'm broke as hell. My, my old lady was working. She was uh, babysitting, doing little daycare jobs and whatnot. But I'm broke. But boom, she got a, uh, her cousin come and stay there. So it's like college-style apartments. So we basically paying for the room. Mm-hmm. But they got it where her cousin was paying for one room and we was paying for the other room. So the apartment was basically ours. You know what I'm saying? And so uh, she had a nigga. And uh, me and him tapped in. We got to making some bread together. We was doing what we was doing. And then what we was doing, we ended up hitting the fan on. And then what were you doing? You moving around on Sixth Street, getting these packs off? Nah, nah. I used to not. live out there too, man. I know how it goes down. Nah, it definitely go down that there. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, it go down that there. <laughs> okay, tell me if this is still the case because when I was down there, it was about two thousand nine, uh-huh. and I remember my impression is that Sixth Street. All different bars, all different genres of bars, right? Mm-hmm. So you got a black bar, like a club type thing. You got a Mexican bar. You got like a white hipster bar. You got like a mm-hmm. white sports bar. All mm-hmm. these different types of bars. And then at night, they all spill out onto the street yeah. as soon as the bars close. And there's cops on horses and shit, yeah. basically because there's such consistent fighting. Yeah. And I seen like the gnarliest brawls of my entire life out there. People getting shot. People running. The whole fucking street empties out. Yeah. People it's think insane. it just be South by Southwest when it be that pack. Right. It's but like it's that all the time. Yeah, yeah. Like that all that the time. one street, yeah. No cap. It's like that all the time. And then when you throw all the homeless people in there too. Oh, wow, yeah. Man, yeah, it be going. It go crazy. But I never went down there though. I wasn't, like I said, I had just turned right, 18. Well, so point, yeah. I'm young. I, I couldn't go to no club. We would go down there just to go down there. But I'm not no, as you can see, I'm not no walker. <laughs> I'm not, you know what I'm saying? So how long you been this big? Or is it a work uh, in progress? Nah, I've been... I probably been like big since like my junior year of high school. Okay, but I was always like I played football, so I was always, you know, what I'm saying just like strong, big and stocky. Big. Mm. But now it's just like I'm just big. Right. You enjoying it, or you feel like you need a change at some point? I mean, I'm he- if if anybody is concerned, I'm healthy. Right. I, I, like I. I don't look healthy, but I'm healthy. I'm. You not. go to the doctor; they tell you you're doing all yeah, right. Hey, you you good? Okay. There's nothing wrong with you. You just just so beast. You get much exercise these days? Actually, yeah. Believe it or not, I, I can show you a picture, but I've lost a lot of weight. Oh, nice. Since I've been just ripping and running this music shit, like in these past two years, I've lost a lot of weight. Right. So. You, you do other drugs or you just smoke weed? No, I just smoke weed. No lean? No. You never got I'm into so, it? I'm so big that like whatever, like, so like, I used to take perks, mm. but I'm just so big that like that one, like I started off at, with a half. First time I ever took a half perk, I went to sleep. Mm. Couldn't couldn't do nothing. Right. And then after that, that half went nothing. That one went nothing. Then I got to two. I'm like, hell no. Nah. Mm. Let me stop this shit while I still can. If I be, you know what I'm saying, over with. That's how drugs are for sure. At first, you're just trying to survive it or yeah. just like not fall asleep or be able to enjoy it. And then all of a sudden, you're starting to rely on it pretty quick. No cap. Yeah. No cap. So I just, I was like, hell no. Nah. Then like even, even lean drink. 
I used to be on drink, but that it's just so much K Ro, it's just so much fake shit out right now that the safest thing to to do is smoke weed. You right. Know what I'm saying? So and I I done served a lot of stuff to people, so you know what I'm saying? I I, done, I see how what you know certain shit makes certain people. You were selling yeah. fake drink? Nah, nah, I ain't no nah, nah, hell no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I done, you know what I'm saying? I see how certain people react off certain shit. So there's certain drugs that I just will never try. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I done seen how this nigga reacted about this shit. Who out of D- Dallas were you looking at as, or in, in Texas in general, who you listening to and what, what was the shit that you were feeling coming up? Uh, in Texas, okay, so boom, my mama from Houston, so I grew up on a lot of slow shit. Mm-hmm. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, my my pops, he he an old school dude, so it was just a lot of R&B, old school, Isley Brother type shit. Okay. So I never really just listened to, like, radio shit like I would hear it just cause it'd be popping at school everybody come to school singing it right so I tap into it but I never just I never just tapped into everybody else's time so like in Texas the only person that I would say that I actually like downloaded the album actually listened to was probably like Sauce Walker mm. I done listened to some Post Malone uh, I like Megan you know mm-hmm. you know I like Erica I like you know Sauce Walker ever try to sign you nah I just feel like he would. No, it was one time we had spoke, and he was. He said that he was gonna try to, but he was like, he. Had, it was either he had seen I was too far gone, or he seen that I was already into something or something. But I was like, because I had said something jokingly, I was like, man, you need to go and put me in TSF. Uh-huh. And he was like, nigga, I was, I was gonna try to get you, but, but nah. Interesting. But nah, nah, that never, never really happened. Here, nah. Okay, but so rewind. You you get caught up. In Austin, mm-hmm. you're making money doing some sort of deed that you mm-hmm. haven't specified here. You and your your homie are doing uh, something. No, nah, I ain't gonna lie to you. I ain't gonna lie because I mean, at the end of the day, I'm end up telling you what the fuck I. Probably old news now, right? Yeah, it's I yeah. I, shit, we was we were taking from people. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We were, we would pull up to sell people weed and just take their money. You know what I'm saying? We were selling the weed and then back door and just you know what I'm saying go. You know what I'm saying? We were just taking it. You know what I'm right. saying? We were just taking from people. Back page was a big thing back then. Oh wow. We was we would act like we finna get some cootie cat and make you know what I'm saying, see where the purse at and just run off with the purse. Or mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? That's just that's out it was grimy. I ain't gonna lie, I was grimy. It's a uh, kinda has a, a short shelf life though, right? No, because every sure. time you get some money, you're making a big ass enemy right there. And no, it's only sure. a matter of time so you make a bad enemy. But I we we I didn't give a fuck. I don't <laughs> right. know what he can, you know what I'm saying? But I didn't give a fuck. I, I knew what I had signed. I knew what I was doing. I knew what I had signed up for. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? So whatever came with it, came with it. I done been maced. I done been, bitch done tried to tase me before. You know what, what I'm really? saying? I, yeah, it didn't happen. We done, man, we done, man, some stuff didn't happen. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just, and you signed up for it. Wait, you were on back page robbing the girls or the guys? The girls. Oh, so you'd set up a date pretending that you wanted to get some pussy and then you would rob the girl? Hey. <laughs> This is, this is, hey, this is. Hey, I respect 18, the game, man. 19. Yeah, it is, it is. I was broke, dog. I ain't gonna lie. Hey, they getting I too much money. I apologize to all those women. You're you like Robin saying? Hood, taking from the rich, giving to the poor. Hey. Or the, the more poor, maybe at that moment. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so how, how, how'd you get, oh, you got caught up for Robin? No, yeah, but not not the females, though. Okay. Cause it, and then at the time, we was only doing dirt to people who was doing dirt. You know mm. what I'm saying? So, oh, so hey. you're selling pussy, you deserve it. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, like, nah, we just, it was people who can't tell. Ah, I feel Can't tell. Right. Ah, okay. What you gonna go tell? You gonna tell them you was coming to sell me some cat? Right. Nah, you can't do that. That's smart. So, uh, and that's just the same with the with with the packs. What what, you gonna tell them? You was coming to buy some green from me, and I took off. Or what you gonna tell them? Mm. So. That's just how we was moving at the time. But like I said, I didn't give a fuck. I didn't care. I just needed some bread. I was just trying to provide. So that's what that was. Right. So you got caught up. Uh, yeah, I got caught up. We got caught up with something different, though. I ain't going to lie. We got caught up because uh, we had this neighbor. Had this neighbor. He used to, he used to he, I think he was from Colorado, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the dude was going back and forth to Colorado. We had gave him some uh, some cash to bring something back. He didn't bring what we wanted, and so yeah. You had to, had to. No, nah, we take we, a baseball bat to his head or what? No, nah, no. Nah, when did we just cleaned his house out one day? Oh, okay. Yeah. I respect yeah. that. And got caught. And got caught. Got caught. 
you have to go away <clears throat> as a result of that, or what happened? I sat for like four months, ended oh. up signing up for probation. I sat for four months. Uh, sat for four months. They gave me a PR bond, let me, let me out. Uh, still had to come all the way from, because then, boom, I did it him like he he, did, he was my neighbor. So they telling me, you can't come to these apartments no more. Uh -huh. So now all my shit is in these apartments. So I try to go get my shit before I go back to Dallas. I guess he see me. He tell him, oh, I seen him. Boom, now they put me on an ankle monitor. Wow. They put me on an ankle monitor. So now I'm in Dallas. Now I got to come all the way from Dallas to Austin once a month for court. I ain't got no car. I'm catching a Greyhound. The one time I had just got a car. I'm talking about just had got a car and drove it to Austin. It broke down on the way to Austin. <laughs> I left it on the highway because I had to go to court. That was my that was my first car. Wow. First car. Yeah. That's rough. So hey. So how yeah. does all this lead to you rapping? At what point do you start rapping? Uh okay, so boom, I start rapping because I, I ain't even start rapping my ex I did. When I had got out, it was people in there that was freestyling and shit. And I could always freestyle. Right. So I I would jump into freestyles and then I had a partner that was rapping. So boom, when I got out, he was rapping and shit. And, and how much time did you do? I was in there like four months. Oh, okay. You know but so you were in like, solitary at one point? This was like, this was way after that, though. Oh, okay. This was, I was on probation. I had got out, was on probation, and then boom, I violated my probation, and I had to get sent back to Austin. I was in there like three months. That last month, I was in solitary. How come? That, you said, why? Yeah. It was my. You I got so into boom. some shit? Yeah, I went crazy. I ain't gonna lie. I, I, I went berserk, man. It was my son's birthday, man. I mean, my, I missed my son's first birthday being mm -hmm. in there. Yeah, my mama was sick, granny was sick. Missed my son's first birthday. I, when I when I don't know, just something after that video call. You know what I'm saying? When I got off that video call for his birthday, something just it was just fucking with me. And so, so I tweaked that. So somebody said the wrong thing to you, or you just lost it? I think I was on the phone, and it was time for us to rack up, uh -huh. and I was still on the phone. And you know what I'm saying? I'm 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 hearing them say it's time for us to rack up, but I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Fuck that. This is my son's birthday. Fuck that. And then cut the phones off. I was in his ass. Damn. Like, cussing them out. I wanted them I want I wanted them to charge at me and some more shit, but he caught them turtles in there. They charged at me for sure. And then yeah, they wanna put me in solitude. Damn. And so is that as brutal as they say it is? It's as brutal as you make it. I mean they 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 give you they give you no tools for nothing like so you literally it's supposed to be bad right you literally you got to just keep it together don't can't let it be you got to do the time you can't let the time do you you don't got a book you don't got nothing I mean if you go in there with one year okay. like if you got some shit in your room already they might they gonna have, they gonna have it in the bag they'll bring it in there too. it's just hard to imagine staring at a fucking wall for like sixteen hours a day but you got to think about it after a while I mean, you can read that whole book they don't you <laughs> yeah. can't trade that book out <laughs> right, you're yeah, in there yeah. with that one book so it's like you gotta you either gotta make good with the guards so that you can try to trade this book with this person that's on this other side on this other wall that's down mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying you just gotta I feel like honestly I'm not religious but if they gave me the Bible. I feel like that could keep me busy for a few months. Nah, and that's <laughs> like and that's something how, incredibly complicated. You nah, know? for sure. Nah, that I've done read a couple books that I never thought I would read really? just out the strength of you ain't got nothing but time. Yeah, got to do something with it. Maybe like uh, Game of Thrones. Yeah, maybe. Dude, dude. <laughs> I know they had them Harry Potter motherfuckers in there. <laughs> Niggas real? was reading them bitches back to back. Wow. I'm talking about to the front and the back was coming off. That's hilarious. No cap. Wow. But um, all right. So you 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 started freestyling a little bit in there, and then you start your mind starts opening up a little bit, and you start thinking, shit, maybe I could do this. Yeah. Then boom, I go back that second time, and I, I sit in solitary. I damn near go crazy. They tell me start rapping. Uh -huh. So boom, I get to I, that's when I get to rapping and get to writing and shit. Man, when I got out, I ain't gonna lie, I was on some finesse shit, like some finesse two times shit. Like how when he got out, and he had a stack of papers. Mm -hmm. I had that same shit. You can I you I can come out the mother of my child right now. She'll tell you I had a, a clear little folder full of written medlines. Like it was medlines that I had wrote raps and shit on. I threw that shit away, or it just sat somewhere and then we moved and it got left there. Or, right, because all the all the raps seem important at the time, yeah, but then seem important once as you're out, it's just whatever. You just and you're in the free world now. You trying to catch up. Right. You think you would rather just punch in and just come up with something on the spot? 
I'm not, I mean, nah, I just, I still wouldn't, I ain't gonna lie, when I had got out, yeah, I was saying, okay, when I get out, I'm a rap. When I got out, I didn't rap. Oh, so I, I thought you were saying you got rid of those raps in exchange for just nah. rapping off the top. Nah, I just got Maybe out just and was like, nothing. fuck rapping. I was like, hell no, nah, I'm not gonna rap, hell no. Nah. Where were you Because going? when I got out, I was back, I had lost everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, right before I got locked up, the whole reason I got locked up was because I had just got evicted out of my apartment. Like, I... I have a little boy and I had the mother of my child and we had just got evicted. They staying, they were staying in McKinney at her home girl shit. Uh -huh. I'm literally sleeping in my car at the time. I'm sleeping in my car. And uh shit, me and my partner, shit, we, we was all going through the same shit. So we tried to go on our moves. My partners got one of my partners got shot in the back three times. And so I took him to the hospital. Got they, shot in the back three times doing what? We was <laughs> we were trying to come up on some bread. Ah, okay. okay. And, and he he got shot in the back, and so boom, took him to the hospital. And when, I, when we took him in, shit, they they wouldn't let me go. And she come to find out, I had a they they violated my probation. Oh. So boom, that's when I had got sent back to us. So there were cops in the ER waiting room or whatever. Like yeah, it was. I guess it's one that they always have there. You know what I'm saying? I okay. guess on some security shit. Yeah, because so, you bring in somebody with bullet wounds, there are like yeah, all kinds of rules yeah. that they're supposed to follow, right? Yeah, they wouldn't. They they wouldn't trying to let us escape. They were. They was. They definitely were trying to talk to us. Wow. And so they. Yeah, that's what they did. They talked to us, and then after a while, they was like, "Well, you got a warrant for your arrest for a probation violation." I had just reported. Like we did this shit on like a Saturday. Uh -huh. I had just reported on like a Wednesday. Okay. And they they didn't tell me nothing about and nothing. And so shit. When I did that, I'm thinking I'm gonna be good. I ended up getting shipped back to Austin. Uh huh. And yeah. that's that's when that's when the rapping shit transpired. Where the dreams really came from. Then I got out and was like, I'm broke. I ain't got shit. I got to get back to it. Right. But I was like, I told myself that I would never do what I did to get in there. So I was I was taking from people. I was mm -hmm. a jack boy. So I told myself I'm not doing that no more. So what are you gonna do now? This is this is where it begins to plug. <laughs> See, this, this is the thing I want to say about you is that there's a lot of people who like get caught up one time, boom, they're like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna be a rapper." And they they sold coke for two months, and they're gonna talk about selling coke for the next twenty years and their no. raps and stuff. You really gave it a concerted effort. Like you really went hard and trying to make it as a criminal. I ain't gonna lie, it's because I feel like I had a lot of shit built up. You're like, angry. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I'm, I'm still angry to this day. That's why I smoke weed. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. A lot of people ask me, but I don't know why. I can't. I can't tell you. I don't know if it's like when I was young. They used to like put me on like Ritalin and shit, but mm -hmm. that, it didn't do nothing but put me to sleep. Like I go to school, grab three people desks, line them together. I can call my mom right now. Mm -hmm. Put three people desks together and, and lay on them hoes and go to sleep. Right. Bet not nobody touched me. And the teachers would literally let me sleep because they knew that if they woke me up, I was <laughs> grumpy. To, I'm, I'm finna slap. I'm finna throw something like right. And so until one day my mama pulled up and seen I was asleep on the desk. Mm. And she told them, hell, now take them out to medicine and out of the other shit. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm good, though. Right. So then you started taking your rap career serious? Uh, After I became Big X Deploy, I did that for like probably like six hard months. And then I got I got myself an apartment, moved my people back in. We was good. And then I was, uh, shit, I was... Believe it or not, I, I was swiping for a little bit, man. I, really? I, that man, come on, man. I had to, I had to get it. But what's I it like when you when you start your music career? Like, and did you see any success right away, or what did it look like? It yeah, it was success right away. I ain't gonna lie. It started working out right away. I, I can't because, like I said, when I had got out of, uh, at Austin at one time, I dropped like one song. Everybody was like, okay, yeah, that's cool. But I never just like dropped it. Dropped it. It was just like some SoundCloud shit. Uh -huh. So all my friends was like, okay, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Boom, like I said, I got a partner that that rap. So boom, I get to rapping. I'm like, you know what? I'm finna come out with an EP called Back From The Dead, or well, a mixtape called Back From The Dead, cause I made that one song. So this is me coming back from the dead. So I dropped the EP and it went crazy. I was having people from Atlanta call me. Like I was sitting in board meetings with people like, was finna get signed. It was a couple times I almost got signed, but they didn't sign me because of the manager I had at the time. Really? Yeah. Well, what do you was, think was wrong with the manager? I guess he had some dealings with, I guess, another artist that they had known about or something, and they was just like his name bad, so they mm -hmm. they didn't want to they didn't want to work with me because of his name. That definitely can happen. Yeah, but he cool though. Like you know what I'm saying? That's my partner. He still called me, check on me to this day. He's just not my manager. Okay. But yes, and that was like, this was early. Like I said, this was I dropped back from the dead. This was all in like a six month period. Right. 
But so when you're talking to the labels, are you feeling like it actually sounds appealing what they're offering to you or just the fact that they was even talking to me, the fact that I'm in front of twelve people, you know what I'm saying, and I just started doing this. I got a partner who like I said, been doing this, and he ain't never told me about none of these calls. So mm. I'm calling him like, hey, I got a meeting with these people. What I'm, what I'm supposed to do? He like, shit, I don't know, nigga. I ain't, I ain't never been in this position. Right. So, shit, I'm just, I just went in everything dry. Like, wasn't no attorney, no nothing. I'm just talking to these people. Right. And they was trying to fly me out, this, that, and the other. But then, like I said, I told them who my uh, manager was, and they wasn't fucking with it. Okay. And so then, boom, kept rapping. I dropped probably like three more songs. We uh, on Half Pint Channel, went up from there. And I, I got signed to, uh, I could have signed to, to some majors, but I decided to go with uh, United Masters. Uh-huh. I just wanted to stay independent because I, I, whatever I do, I want to know what I'm doing so that I can be the best at it. Right. Whatever I do, I want to be the best at it. What, what do you feel like they offered you that made it appealing to you? Uh, really, it was just the A&R. Like, like I said, I didn't know what I was doing. I wanted some people that was really just going to be Hands on that was willing to teach me some shit. Mm. I'd have went to a major, they would have just they wouldn't have been worried about all this shit. They would have just turned me up as an artist, gave me some bread, and wanted all the other shit. You know what I'm saying? They would have just went from there. Right. But with UM, it was like the AR A and R flew out to me like this was during the week. I had a busy weekend, like it was my little cousin's birthday party at Chuck E. Cheese. Right. He came to that and some more shit. So it was just the fact that I seen, okay, y'all hands on, I fuck with that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And then it's like, yeah, I still got leeway. I'm still independent. I'm still an independent artist. Big difference between how they act when they're trying to sign you versus how they act afterwards, though, right? No, nah, he outside it's, right now. It's still cool? Okay. My ain't outside <laughs> right now. My ain't ca- he, for my out, he was just with me in Dallas for two months. Right. But, I mean, it's crazy when you think about the concept of signing because sometimes I'll look at an artist and, you know, they could sign right now and they seem like they're taking the time and I think, oh, that's really smart. And then sometimes I look at artists that I know and I'm like, damn. If that dude had signed, mm-hmm. he could have got half a million dollars like two years ago. And yep. now ain't nobody gonna sign. Nobody gives a fuck. Right. Like he he thought he had the time and the and the the sort of leverage to be able to wait and build his 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 own name and everything. It turns out he had like three months hype in him. Yeah. And then it's just it just expired, you know? So it's it's all a gamble of yeah. how much you believe in yourself. Yeah, no, for sure. And I believe in myself 100%. Mm. <laughs> we ain't we ain't did nothing but go. Man, when they first when I signed, I was doing 900 streams. Uh, what in a month? Really, 900 streams in a month, bro. The only reason that they signed me was because I was going crazy on Half Pint Channel. So YouTube was uh, YouTube the thing. Was yeah, definitely a thing. sometimes you see that where an artist hasn't really like built themselves up on Spotify or anything yeah. at all, but they're big on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. So like, yeah, that's I was just going crazy on YouTube, like not even on my channel, mm. like just on another person's channel, Half Pint Films channel. Right. And they seen that and they reached out and we went from there. But how but much like, credit do you give him for helping Pint, get your name out there? You know, I text him randomly throughout the week and be like, I appreciate you. Right. You you help make Big X the player because the rapper. You know, somebody like him has like a good, like it's not a huge follower base. Mm-hmm. It's not like putting your video on World Star or some shit, but yeah. it is like a very concentrated group of of fans, hardcore mm-hmm. fans of the exact genre that you're putting out there. You know, so it's not like sure. y- 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 it can really help get you in the right eye, in front of the right eyes. You know, no, it did. It definitely like. And then I'm from Texas, so it that's a Texas channel. It definitely turned me up in Texas. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It was just. I don't know. It, it was it was it was a big part of my career. You feel like a Texas rapper or a Dallas rapper? I'm gonna say Texas because you stayed all over, and it's it feels like you're not really like identifying with one city specifically so much. N- nah, I just I'm gonna say Texas. Well, you you can you can't really see it yet because you haven't heard what I've been making and what I've been you know what I'm saying been doing. So the new music is gonna change everything. No, nah, for sure, it's definitely a, a, a different me. I'm talking about what I do now, like every, like what I, when all the music that you probably heard before is what I used to do. Where we was talking, street shit. Yeah, now we're talking about how we having this shit. How mm-hmm. we, you know what I'm saying? We can go to the mall and not look at no tags. How we can go to the club and fuck it up and not have, you know what I'm saying? We talking about shit like that now, right? But it's still, I'm still making it sound good. Definitely. But we still talking about that other shit too, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm sure, yeah. We still, we still got a little mixture of that in there, right? I ain't gonna lie to you. Definitely. But that's just for the people who, you know what I'm saying, them day one fans who who know where a nigga really come from. How do you feel like you found your flow? Like, did you used to have 
other styles that maybe didn't work out or I'm like still t- to me you're still working on to me mm. i'm still finding my flow but everybody else just feel like bro it's your voice is mm. is but i'm still i, I don't want to just be no rapper like i want to be for one i just want to be wealthy i really i ain't gonna lie to you i really don't care about like muse like like to be a rapper i don't mm. care to be a rapper like i just i want to be able to provide for my people right if 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 Somebody came with a bigger movie, like they wanted me to come be in a movie right now and they was paying more than this rap shit, I'm gone. Yeah. I'm my baby. You look at it more as a hustle than an art form? Definitely. And my whole life been a hustle. Mm. It's, all this shit is a hustle. Money makes the world go around. Money is what's going to make sure my son is straight for the rest of his life. And I'm going to do whatever is going to provide for my son. Right. So It's interesting that you had to use up basically all of the illegal routes that you could think of, scamming, that shit not robbing, fair. drug dealing, all these things like kind of didn't work out before you were like, all right, I'm going to rap about all of them. But that's the thing, though. It, it could have worked out. You know what I'm saying? Because like yeah. I said, whatever I do, I'm going to be the best at it. That's, and that, that's what the problem was. <clears throat> I was doing the shit, and I was just, I was so good at the shit that I was doing the shit so much, and I just was slipping up. Yeah. I mean, selling drugs or doing illegal activity is just a gamble as well. Like, some, no, for sure. I, I've met people who I realize, like, oh, you've been selling lean and perks and, and weed for, like, 10 years, yeah. and you never got bothered by the cops. Like, you managed to just avoid them this whole time. That's amazing, because a lot of people get caught up, like, a couple months in, you know? But see, now, snitching is at an all-time high. So I hear, yeah. So, and, uh, and whoever been doing 10, 10 plus years... Hide your kids, hide your wife. <laughs> you hear me? No cap. But sometimes in LA, and you could tell me if Texas is like that at all, it feels like if you're selling designer drugs door to door, pulling up to people's studios and shit, that that's just like not on the cops' radar at a certain point because they got violent crime to worry about. They got fentanyl to worry about. They got all this shit. So it's like if you're selling perks to some guy who wants to buy perks, Kind of like whatever they got. They got kids on perks out here work, right. to worry about. They got kids smoking crack out here that they but could see, be worried that, about. I ain't gonna lie, that that fit now is fucking everything up. Because then, like you said, when you got people mm-hmm. that's doing designer shit like that, it's still fucking up their business. Because boom, when the feds come hit that studio or that spot, mm. and you in there with your designer drugs, they they ain't gonna do nothing but add you to the list. Right. So it's still fucking up business. Yeah. Either way it go. I know a lot of people who so lean in L.A., and I don't know of a lot of them who've really caught cases over it. I don't know. It's di- you know? It's L.A. I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah. L.A. is a little different. You can smoke a joint in front of a law, so yeah. I don't know. It's different. In Texas, you can't do that. You do that nah. in Texas, you're over with. You get pulled over, and, and you got some purple in your cup? Or are you getting are you getting arrested? Man, I just got pulled over and had some crumbs on my floor, and they oh, flipped my car. Really? Man. Wow. That's fucked up. And I had I, I had a warrant, uh, warrant and everything else. They just seen a little weed, checked the car, it wasn't no weed, no mm-hmm. gun, they let me go. It's such a, a toss-up because it's like Texas, great gun laws, terrible weed laws. L.A., bad gun laws, great weed laws. Gun laws, not, well, I mean, gun laws are good to like an extent in Texas. Like, I'm fighting two unlawful carries right now. Oh, really? Yeah. Where did you have it that you caught an unlawful carry? Both uh, in Dallas. Well, one of them in Dallas, one of them... Was in Wichita. But is it an unlawful carry if you're, like, doing something illegal with the gun? Or were you in a specific type of place? Or? So, like, I was in a car with somebody who had weed. Boom, oh. unlawful carry. Wow, it's that easy. Mm. What if I didn't notice he had weed? Right. What if everybody I've known for my entire life smokes weed? <laughs> you feel me? I, and I just want to protect myself. You know right, what I'm yeah. saying? So, yeah, I'm fighting two of those right now. Damn. That's fucked up. Um... But okay, like in terms of what it feels like to all of a sudden, even over the course of like the past year, to have everything kind of going in a very different direction in your life, all of a sudden you got people or corporate business people and they're supporting you and they're very much invested in your career and shit. Like, how do you feel like you're adapting to having this sort of positive mentality? Whereas I assume when you're like robbing people off Craigslist that, you know, <laughs> your, your mentality is not really like, you know, you're not focused on living your life the right way necessarily, right? Like I said, at first I was just a crazy man. I had no path. I was just doing to provide for myself. Mm. But now I have like a little person that I'm providing for. So it's like... Mm. What, whatever I got, whatever I'm doing to provide has got to be legal. Because I also told him that I, I would never miss another birthday. Right. So, like I said, that's why I say everything I do, I'm doing it for him. So. How old? He's three. Three. Yes, sir. My kid's uh, almost two. Okay, yeah. See, my boy three, but he looked like he's seven. Really? 
Yeah, you big boy. Wow. Big boy. <laughs> That's dope. Yeah, it'll definitely get your fucking mind working the right way. No, Once you start sure. to think like, yeah, I can make this amount of money selling drugs, but if I get caught, then I'm going to not see my fucking kid for this many years probably, and that's pretty bad, so maybe I should just not do that. You know? But see, like, I still didn't know. Like, I st it still didn't really click into my head until, like I said, I missed that birthday. Mm. When I missed that birthday, I seen, damn, you really care about somebody more than yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, you mm. really, what the fuck? You just, you ain't never tripped out of a CO done, done cussed you out, spit at you. Put his hands on you, and you still ain't never tripped. Right. But this nigga just cut the phone off on your son's birthday, and you just went crazy. Mm. Nah, that's, that's, yeah, that, that showed me right there. All right, you love this nigga. You gonna do whatever, you need to do whatever for this little boy. Nah, yeah. That's some real shit. It'll turn you into a man, you know? No, nah, no, nah, for sure. The responsibility that you take on will turn you into a man. Yes, sir. You know? Um, you me. What uh, Speaking of being a man, what happened to your shag? <laughs> you still got it? No? Nah, I cut it off, man. Why is that? All right, so. I don't know. Growing up, I don't always had a shag. Like it was just me and my pops thing. He, mm. he had one. I had one. Even when you were a kid, it was already a thing. Yeah. Wow, I'm so fucking no, new to sure. the game. No, no, for sure. Yeah, it was been before trap and yellow bees and them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was. It was already up. Ten K cash. He put me onto the shag back in the so, day. Yeah, it was yeah. that way before him. Yeah. But yeah, no, nah, yeah, it's always been a thing. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I just always grew up having one, and so it's always been like a little routine for me. Like I go from a fade. To a shag, then I grow out afro, then I get dreads, then go to jail, mm. get out, cut them off, right. and start over. Damn. So I don't know. It's just I'm trying to break that cycle. So like now I'm I'm just kind of just letting my shit do whatever type shit. Right. Everybody yeah. thinks the shag is is gonna be their their path into the game, but maybe nah. the shag has been holding everybody back. Nah, nah I ain't gonna lie to <laughs> When I had that shag, is when it's definitely when. It's, she was going crazy. Yeah. That's when she really started. Like, that's when everything started. Big I mean, step with Mr. Trouble, all them videos I had to shag. If a cop's driving behind you and he sees that you got a shag. You're going to jail. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> you're going to jail. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the conclusion that they <laughs> yeah, draw. You're gonna get <laughs> Let's see what this guy's got in his car. Yeah, got to. Hey, is there a compartment back there? You got one in the yeah, no, You, you sure. know what the last time I went to Dallas was? Was there was a big ass Juice World show right at a uh -huh. fucking football stadium in 2019, mm -hmm. and it was Mo three got arrested outside of it yeah. trying to get in. I remember that. Yeah, I know. Yellow Beezy was on that show too. Right? Yellow Beezy was actually on the show. They added Mo three last minute, mm -hmm. and then, however, I'm not sure who said don't let him in or whatever, but he basically he was on the list of don't let him in, even though he's on the flyer. Yeah. And so then we're all inside, like seeing it on World Star, like oh shit, Mo three getting arrested outside the That's fucking crazy. show. It was wild. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in terms of Mo three. You still see like you know murals of him. You still hear him on the radio. Like, do you feel like no, Texas is still sure. showing love to him or definitely. what? Definitely, that okay. man is definitely still all over the radio. All right, he definitely still in my phone. So, yeah, I mean, he ain't he ain't died down. I mean, yeah. And I know Rainwater finna pull something else out. You know what I'm saying? Right. I know he gonna pull something else out. I know it's another month three project project out there. Oh, okay. So I, I'm pretty sure he. I'm not saying I know, but I'm pretty sure. Right. No, so that's good to know. Um, are the streets in Texas kind of out of control as well as in, like LA, New York? You hear that constantly. Do you feel like Texas nah. is a little wild right now? I ain't gonna lie, Atlanta, LA. Yeah, they they yeah y'all tripping right now. We, don't, <laughs> we ain't doing that. Like like most you got is it's people popping each other out there, but it's just on some. Nah, I ain't gonna lie. In Texas, ratting niggas is just ratting niggas is telling. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the fuck is going on. I don't know if it's in the air, the water. I don't know, but your boy Charleston White is inspiring that. Definitely, I definitely <laughs> feel like he is. But I fuck with Charleston though because he's a civilian. You can't be mad okay. at no civilian for being a civilian, right? So at least he letting it be known that he's a civilian. So you can't, you know what I'm saying? It's the niggas who play gangster mm. and whole time be on some Charleston White shit, right? Them the ones. I fuck you, you know what I'm saying? But, one. All right, let me ask you this: How many times have you been to LA at this point? <clears throat> this is my third time. Okay, Blake. I feel like L.A. has such a reputation now where out-of-town rappers come here and, and get stuck for the jewelry or have crazy-ass shit happen to them. W you thinking about it? Do you look at L.A. like, oh, I got to move around a certain way? I got to be on top of my shit because some wild stuff could happen out there? I mean, there? you got to move a certain way wherever you go. Right. I mean, R.I.P. P.N.B., yeah, he died out here, but yeah. you know how many people died everywhere else? Same mm -hmm. way, you know what I'm saying? Dolph got killed in his city. Uh, XXX got killed in you his, know? you know what I'm saying? Like, So it, that happened. You just got to... 
be on your team wherever you at, especially once you once you had a, a higher standard, you know you're not regular no more. I know I know you still wanna be regular, you know, you still wanna move like you're regular, but mm. it's not that no more. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So like yeah, I definitely I'm like my, I ain't gonna lie, my manager told me he was like, I ain't gonna lie, it's, it's certain places in LA you had to uh, had to tuck your chain. Yeah. I said, nigga, I said, I don't even wear shirts. What you talking about? <laughs> Tuck my chain. I said, now what we can do is we make sure these people right here and these people right here so that if right. something go down, I can, you know what I'm saying, maneuver. But we ain't tucking our chains. I mean, I respect the city. I believe in tapping in. I don't believe in checking in. Right. I believe in tapping in and all that good shit. You know people out here? Nah, I don't. I'm actually, you know what I'm saying, I'm trying to tap in. But we said that up as, you know what I'm saying, we already said that up. Right. But either way it go. Yeah, no, I mean, but to put in perspective, like, there's been a shitload of robberies happening in, mm-hmm. you know, Beverly Hills and uh, the nicest parts of L.A., where P&B Rock was, was, like, you know, one of the worst parts, according to a lot of people. Like, one of the most likely places for somebody to get that kind of situation. I ain't gonna lie, he probably knew that they Roscoe's was gonna be the best one. Yeah. The weed. Roscoe's, they'd be kind of in the hood, they'd be, they food be There's the best. a weed company that he was doing a meeting with, I believe, that's, like, right near there. So oh, he, that's... so he's not thinking. I think from from what I heard, he's not thinking. Oh, I'm in this part of town. He's just thinking. Oh, this is a restaurant. Yeah. That most of those, most of Roscoe's are in nice areas. Because he not, he not from out here. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I, should I don't be knowing? Like I ain't gonna lie, we done been in good areas, and I'd be like, bro, I ain't gonna lie. We was just driving through the hills the other day, and we was looking at certain houses, and we was like. What the fuck? Why is that house in the hills? But then we would drive and you would see the whole back of that motherfucker hanging off the cliff. <laughs> so I'm like, God damn, that's why they, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. you just can't, you can't put nothing, I don't know, everything look good out here, I guess you could say. But you know what's weird is that I wish that PNB Rocket just stopped for a second and thought, ah, I'm, I'm going to just leave my chain in the car. You know? I don't think it would have made a difference. You don't think? Know, I think that's what they're after. They know who he is. People know right. who he is. They they would have just they was gonna try him regardless. Yeah, I feel like they would have because it's like even if even if you ain't got no jury on, I'm you PNB you PNB. I, I know right. you, you you gotta at least have something in your pockets. But this is the thing is this culture. I believe if there had been a photo of him in the Roscos with no jury on, this is saying the meme pages would have posted that photo and said, "Oh look at PNB Rock. He's scared. He in, he in the Roscos with no jury." That's that's fucked up. Like, there's something wrong with a world that we live in where you are you required to do that. Yeah, but I mean, I feel like a lot of people wouldn't do it for that reason. Oh, you. I guess you're right because that's just like my manager telling me to take my chain in, and I was like, mm. I, so I guess that's the same shit. Some places around here, I would say, yeah, just just tuck it, fuck it, <laughs> throw it in the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> that's on, why man. you just stay away from them places. You don't need to be in them places. And that's then. exactly. If you come to L.A., hey, go to the studio, go to the hotel. No we not from you, here. You can it's, hit some restaurants and shit, but don't be taking any wild no chances. Yeah. And if it, and if the restaurant in the hood, stay in the car. We just went to a Roscoe's, and my manager made me stay in the car. <laughs> but we live in the era of Postmates. <laughs> no care. You know they've made it no really care. easy. Nah, but I, yeah. I definitely, I definitely understand. And I feel it though, because I still be trying to, like, I don't, I don't know. I still feel like I ain't. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just big X. I'm the same nigga I used to be. Right. I just got a little, a little more money. I think yeah. you, you got a long future ahead of you because you got the kind of personality where I think people are gonna want to see you win. For sure. Yeah. No, nah, for sure. And that's just because I feel like that's because they know when I win, I'm, I, I take care, mm. take care of everybody around me. As long as I'm winning and I'm, my, I. I'm happy off of seeing other people happy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it'd be certain shit I don't even be want to do, but I know it's going to make that person happy. So You ever been shot? No. Nah. Oh, I thought that's what that was right there. That's a stab. Oh, that's just a little scar? Yeah. Oh, a stab? Yeah. Oh, what happened? Fighting. Got mm. stabbed. It happens. Regular shit. Yeah. All right, man. I appreciate you coming through, and uh, everybody tap in. Spotify, Apple Music, all that shit. Turn my guy up here. Yes, sir. Big X to plug everything, man. I make sure I tap in. Tap in. Texas yes, is officially in the building. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For sure. No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, TikTok, Patreon, Instagram. Like, comment, and subscribe. No Jumper.com if you want to support. Appreciate y'all.